Hello everyone, my name is Tina Adams Stuffel. Today I am going to give you a review of our paintbrushes used specifically for oil painting. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have and what I found works best. When I started out, I started out with brushes from the craft stores and I made the mistake, well sort of, but you know, everything happens for a reason, of buying synthetic brushes and what happens is they separate with the oils because the oils are heavy bodied and they just cause these little fibers to stick together and it doesn't work so well when you're trying to get good coverage, but it did work really, really well as I put on those eyelashes last night, all right? So when we run across things like that, sometimes they have a better use for things. After that, I started graduating up to natural bristle brushes, and I found these at, uh, this is Simply Simmons. I'm pretty sure it's available at Michael's and possibly Hobby Lobby as well. It is a natural hair brush, and it holds up so much better. Um, but I have had these after time, fray, and the ferrules come off. And that is what told me I needed to step up my game and brushes a little bit. I had a, this is supposed to be a flat brush, but as you can see, it's not very flat, is it? Because if it was flat, it would be flat like this. So it didn't retain its shape well. This is a Royal Langnickel, and you'll find them in entry-level kits in the stores and so forth. And they're great. They're natural hair brushes. They're great for starters. This is the type of things, uh, these is where I recommend starting until you learn, um, and especially until you can remember to clean your brushes because it's very important to retain the life of them. This uh, Royal Lane Nickel, although I don't use it in everyday painting, I keep it on hand because if I have to put in like uh, bushes, brush, grass, and so forth, they work wonders for that. And after that, I graduated and stepped up to, well, I thought I was stepping up. Let me give you another one if I have it here, Silver Brush. And as you can see, it holds up way better than this Grumbacher. I believe these are pretty close. Uh, the Grumbacher is a little larger. The Grumbacher one is, and I'm only speaking from Grumbacher from the synthetic one I've, I've bought from them. Uh, it, the synthetic I wanted to try, um, but it just did not, it, it was too soft here and it didn't retain the round shape the end of the brush was supposed to retain. So then I went on to silver brush and that seems to do pretty good. This one is a lot. It's just, if you can look, it's firmer. Let me give you an example and then go back and look at this one. See how much it, it just is, you have to work with it sometimes to see. It's hard to show you on camera. The silver brush, this is a smaller round. It could have been a flat. I can't tell, but it, it if you can take a look at that there, really, I don't know what I got on here. It really lost its shape, see? But again, I keep it because, you know, not all brush and grass is the same size, so it's a little smaller one to have on hand there for when you're doing different types of work. Okay, then after that, I went ahead and graduated to Blick Master Stroke, and you can find them at Blick Art Materials. I absolutely love their brushes. They have held up very well. They have performed well. I use them through most of my exhibition works and paintings last year and have been very, very pleased. Right around that time, I tried another one, Princeton, which is made um, in Princeton, New Jersey of all places. So good old USA. And um, I am in love with this brush because it is such a fine point a fine crisp, well, I shouldn't say point, but a nice crisp edge. And um, this is a different brush. It's a bright, not a flat, like this Blick Master Stroke. So when the difference in those is the flat's longer, the bright's not as long. And it will hold more paint. These are a little bit more tricky to work with. You don't apply a lot of pressure, but we'll go into that another time. Basically what I'm going to talk to you about is what's retaining its shape and so forth. This blick it did fray on me just a wee bit. Um, it's going to happen eventually after some time, but to find a brush that holds up and doesn't fray on you, that retains its shape once you get experienced and you're doing nice work is invaluable to me. For covering your canvas, 
when you have a large canvas like the one behind me, it's always nice to have a large brush. So this is, I think, a two inch, two and a half inch Lick Master Stroke again, natural hog bristle brush. I think this one's made for varnishing and I have some other ones that are for gessoing. Uh, they're great for covering the canvas as well because they're natural bristles, but <clears throat> you want to wash them and clean them real good afterwards. And believe me, when you start investing in these brushes, cleaning them and maintaining your brushes is extremely crucial. Um, and then this is a um, probably a Hobby Lobby store brush I bought to detail something, um, not necessarily Hobby Lobby, but a Hobby store that I brought to detail something. And it's a little tiny, we call these um, a liner brush, some people call them riggers. I like them for fine detail. I can't remember what bristle that's made out of, but I also tried one, one of these from Princeton, and I've used it on the horse painting behind me, and it has been an incredible brush, once again. So Princeton has not let me down yet. Uh, newer brushes I'm working with, but I'm really liking how they how they um, perform. And this is also uh, Princeton, it's uh, called a shader. And it looks a little bit, if you're a female, you'll know, you know, kind of like an eyeshadow brush or whatever, but it's a little stiffer, not too stiff. And I'm not going to go into the reasons I use that right now. I'll do that when I do put together tutorials for you, which by the way is on the books. I just don't know when it's going to happen because I have a lot of art galleries I'm working with supplying material to right now. So that could be anywhere from a, a year to two, sooner or later. If you want to stay in the loop with that, um, it is on my books to do. It's, it's out there. It's just not happening yet. If you want to subscribe for when I do put together tutorials for you, um, check out tinasfinearts.com. Hit the subscribe button. You navigate over to uh, news. The new, it's news, news and blog. Drop down menu there, subscribe, or you should get a pop-up right on the website. If you like this, please click the like button, share it out with your friends. I hope you found it helpful, and have a great day.